few thoughts about the election. Well, it's over. It's concluded. And I'm not here to gloat. I'm not here to rain on anybody else's parade. This country, unfortunately, is still very divided. And how it comes back together again, who can help do that? I think we all have to take some responsibility for that. It can't be just the leaders at the top. Yes, the leaders, the politicians, those who have the airwaves, those who have the, the podium, uh, they can have a lot to do to influence uh, this country's sentiment. And there's been a lack of that in really the last number of years, going back several decades, we've become more and more divided. And that's a travesty because we're all Americans, we're all people here, and we only want what's best for, for ourselves, for the country, for our kids, our grandkids. That's what we want. But the leaders have other ideas in mind. Um, to be a, a political leader today, I think, takes a, a special kind of person from the president on down. Someone who decides to go into politics has got to be able to put it all on the table because you know the scrutiny and the lambasting and just uh, the hate from the quote other side is always going to be horrific. I can't imagine going into politics and it's a shame because we need leaders in politics and yet who wants to put themselves out there for that kind of, of attack. It takes a lot of money to get in politics and I think today unfortunately because of that amount of money uh, too many politicians have to sell themselves out. They may have strong ideals and morals and have a real reason why to get into politics. And then they find out to actually get in the door to get elected, they have to sell themselves out somewhere behind the scenes, special interest groups. Where's the money coming from to, to help the campaign? So they go, okay, I'll accept that because I just have to get in. And once I get in, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the system. And then they get into the system, the system changes them. And you, they either find out you just go along with the flow with whoever's in charge, whoever is, is there, the veterans, you go along with them, you kind of sell yourself out, or if you try to go against the grain, they'll out you. To become the president of the United States, it takes the same thing. I think in most cases, it takes huge sellout. It takes someone who's willing to put themselves out there and then the special interests uh, in the, the, the hands in the pocket and the give backs. Uh, unfortunately, the corruption is, is just massive today. And it's not just this country, it's, it's other countries. We've just become unfortunately, really, really bad uh, at this. And again, I'm not trying to be negative about the election. It's, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad it's settled. Uh, we needed that. I'll say a few things about, about Trump. There's nobody who's gonna be perfect, perfect leader for this country. We could, we could try our best to put the perfect person in there and the perfect person wouldn't get elected because it's just not gonna happen. So we have to go with the best choice we have, the best choice that this country puts up, the best choice that the political parties put into place. And that's what we had in this election. That's what we have in every election. That's the best we get. I'm not here to criticize either side, either, either party, other than saying it's just the system we have. And maybe it can be changed over time. It is what it is. We have to live with it. The reason I am happy that Trump won, again, all things considered, is that he's an outsider. And that's what everybody, the establishment and the media hate. They hate the outsider who has nothing to gain except that he is a narcissist. He is a narcissist, uh, he has a huge ego. Why else would you do something like this when you have enough money uh, to, to last yourself and your family and your legacy? You've got enough, you don't need any more. Why would you do this to set yourself up? Why would he go through uh, the, the torture uh, of the long days of campaigning to assassination attempts uh, and, and all the indictments that he's gone through? And, and why would you do that? You've gotta, you've gotta be a different person inside. And I'm not saying that char those characters are, are the kind of person that would be my best friend, but I think that's what it's ta it takes in this world today for our country to have someone like that who is not gonna be incentivized by money or honestly power. Uh, he has the power, he is the president, but I don't think he rules because he's, he's gonna be a dictator. I think he actually cares about the country. And I know it's strange for a lot of people to understand that because they see all the, the negative things that he's done in his life and who, who doesn't have those? He's exposed. Everybody who goes into politics is gonna get exposed. They all have baggage. Every one of them have baggage. So we have to put that aside and say, what characteristics does this person have that hopefully can, can take the country and remove as much of the corruption as possible? It's always gonna be there. I think Trump has a chance. Will there be corruption within his, his administration? Of course there will be. There always gonna be. But I really think he's gonna do the best he can and hopefully he has the wisdom and the discernment from his first term and can do more to dismantle 
some of what uh, we know as the, the deep state today that is super embedded and really is what's been running the country, at least for the last four years. Now, that being said, where do we go from here? I'm a person of gratitude. I'm, I, I'm grateful every day that I have my health and my family and I can grow up in a country where I still have the freedom to, to make a lot of choices. You do too. And no matter where you are today, whatever your issues you're fighting, at least we have a country where there is an, there's still opportunity. And that's what I, I bank on. There's the opportunity. And I think we'll continue to have opportunity. Trump is entering a presidency which I wouldn't want to take on because there are a lot of headwinds in, in tail right now. A lot of headwinds that he had a part of back in, in, in his administration from 2016 to 20. He had a part of some of that. Yes, uh, the, the egregious spending, the deficit spending, the massive debt. He had a big part of it. Um, Biden had a big part of it. Um, Obama had a part of it. Um, George W. had a I mean, it's been building. So this is bipartisan. And, and there's nobody in, in Congress today, House or Senate, really that stands up much at all and says anything about the, the deficit spending. Why? Because they all, all want to keep their, their seat uh, to try to do the best they can, I guess, with what they're given. But there's sellouts everywhere. Even though the sentiment may be strong in certain sectors for the U.S. economy, we all love it. We love to see the markets going up. We love to see, see the higher and higher. My fear, my warning is that the fundamentals in our economy are not strong. Leadership's one thing, and, and, and I think we, we want to stand behind a leader and, and stand behind the best of the best. And that can drive financial markets into places we've never seen before. And we may see some more of that, but I don't think it's going to last. I think we have to be willing to hedge our bets. We've got to hedge our bets. That's the way I look at the landscape. And certainly I may miss some all-time highs in certain areas that are still blowing higher. But I think it's better to take some chips off the table and hedge and say, what's good enough? What's enough of a return? What's enough capital for me to be satisfied with that I can live my life and have the freedom and autonomy that I really want, that I've really always wanted? The freedom to, to live my life and, and make the memories and spend the time with the people I want to rather than always grinding, grinding, grinding to create more and more and more. Yeah, I was that person decades ago. I was that person. I didn't know how much was enough. I just thought you got to get all you can get. You've got to drive, drive, drive. There's nothing wrong with a strong work ethic. I'm all a fan of it, but I think there's got to be some temperance. And I think for particularly younger people to understand that there's still plenty of opportunity today, but it's not going to be the same model that we had in the last 40 years, which I grew up in, had major benefits, major benefits of, of a country that had a lot, of, a lot of economy behind it and we didn't have the massive debts and deficits. The country's changing and Trump can't change it. One person can't change it. They can make some positive influence and maybe remove some regulations and allow as much free market growth as possible, but there's still a lot of fundamental problems that have to be dealt with. And that's not gonna be easy. And we don't live in a unipolar world where the US can dominate everything anymore. We live in a global, a multipolar world, and that's going to change a lot. And even Trump, with everything he wants to do and try to do and try to be as free market as he can, he's going to be between a rock and a hard place. So don't, um, when things start to, to, to crater and you see markets go through corrections and changes, you can't blame it on the guy at the top. Um, and you can't just blame it all on the person who was there or not there in the last four years. It's a, it's a culmination. It's a combination. I think we've just got to get over that. We can't hang our head on any one group, one politic, one administration. We've got to be in control of our lives and our economy. And we still have the opportunity to do that in this country. But we've got to be more out in front and more intentional. We can't be passive. I don't want to ever be passive in my life. I want to be strong advocate, but I'm going to be strong advocate, not just for me, not just for my, my wealth, not just for my generational transfer of wealth. I want, I want the best things for this country. And my mission is to, to try to continue to educate as many people as I can to have the same resiliency, the resourcefulness that we all need to have and we can have. We're built that way. And to, to take more charge and do more good for this world this, and this community that, that we have at large. We have the, the choice to do that. And I'm making a strong, strong commitment to be that person as long as my life and my ability and my vigor allow me to do that. I'm going to take that charge on and I want you to do it in your way, wherever you want to. You can do it in a, in a, a, a small, but very meaningful, impactful way with just people you know or young people that you can mentor. 
You can be part of larger missions. Whatever you want to do, choose something because every little bit helps. The economy is going to be what the economy is. The fundamentals are going to take over at some point. And yes, it's going to be rocky. It's going to get tough at times, but we can make it through. I am grateful that I live in this country. I'm grateful we have the opportunity to vote. And I'm grateful that this country can, I think, build itself back and remain strong again. It's going to take some work. I hope you're there to do it with me.